now we are going to start to uh, like as we did already did uh, the alkanes now we are doing, uh, going to start with an unsaturated system that is the alkenes and alkynes so the first of all we are taking into account the alkenes so as the alkanes are called as paraffins alkenes are called as olefins alkenes are called as olefins that means oil forming paraffin means low affinity olefin means oil forming right because their lower member actually form the oil products so that is why they are called as olefins so let us talk about the bond first so as i told you that it belongs to an unsaturated system so in this the carbon and carbon at least possess one double bond in a chain so minimum one double bond is a present in a carbon chain so now if we talk about suffix so obviously the suffix is going to be in suffix is in as the alkene ends with in so it, the suffix is going to be in right and if i talk about the general formula it is cnh2n that's it alkene was cnh2n plus 2 here we have cnh2n that's it members that means the homologous series if you talk about so their first member is particularly not the of one carbon atom it starts with the second to a minimum two carbon atom in the chain because the reason being we know that the carbon carbon for uh, this thing again uh, listen again for uh, the, for the compound to behave as an alkene there must be a double bond and uh, the single carbon cannot make double bond with hydrogen as we all know so minimum two carbon are required so that is why the first member of alkene starts with minimum two carbon atoms that is the eth so the members we have of homologous series is ethene propene butene pentene hexene heptene octene like that right if i talk about formula ethene is c2h4 propene is c3h6 butene is c4h8 as you can see that n means 2 2 into n that is 4 so again they, they all obey the formula cnh2n now if we talk about the common name so their common name in the common name what we do is we take word root and we add ileen to it we add ileen to it like for ethene uh, i'm writing here for ethene, the common name is eth and we need to add ileen, so it, ethylene, like for this propylene, for this butylene, likewise. So that means you just need to add ileen, Y-L-E-N-E. -E. And uh, now, so this is what is the common name, but when we talk about IUPEC, so you know that what we need to do in order to write the IUPEC, again the same rule, prefix, word root primary suffix right and in this case the primary suffix is en this can be en uh, eth but pent hex anything and these are the substituents so let us um, I, I want to do an example for you suppose it's like that right so my when i'm uh, this thing naming according to the iupec the double bond should get the lowest number so let's make one more carbon here so if I number from this side 1, 2, 3 and 4, so my carbon with double bond is getting 2 number. But if I number it from this side, my carbon is getting 4 number. So obviously my preference will be for the top one, this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when I am writing the name, the name should be as it does not have any side chain. So that means we will be missing, skipping the prefix. So word root will be pent. At 2 position there is in, so it is pent. Likewise, if there is some uh, substituent present, so just prefix its name as we have already done in the in this thing, general principles of organic chemistry that how to do the IUPEC. So this is what you are going to do the IUPEC for the alkenes. Now if we talk about the isomerism, so as you can easily see that uh, what kind of isomerism they possess, they possess the this thing, the uh, stereo isomerism also and they possess the structural isomerism also. Our, uh, as we have already done in the uh, this thing, the general principles of organic chemistry. So to concentrate more on the isomerism, to, may, uh, to know more about the isomerism that how they obey, uh, obey the position isomerism or how they obey this is transform. So just refer to my that video of general principles of organic chemistry right so you will be well versed with that in that we have already explained the different types of isomerism and how they are how they occur actually or which compounds show which kind of isomerism so this is what is a general basic introduction for the alkenes so now we are going to start with the preparation of alkenes so there are many methods for preparing alkenes out of them uh, these five are the important methods which i have chosen for you or you can say which are included in your syllabus so what is that actually so the first method is that the dehydration of alcohol 
dehydration of alcohol. D means removal, hydration means water from alcohol. That means we need to remove water from alcohol. So suppose let's say that I have an alcohol. Let's make any alcohol. Let's say it's like that. This is propanol. Let, let us make its complete open structure. These are my H satisfying the valencies of carbon. I am going to dehydrate this alcohol. So for dehydration I need a substance which has the ability or which act as a dehydrating agent. So we know that nothing can uh, occur as the powerful dehydrating agent as we have concentrated sulfuric acid. So here concentrated sulfuric acid is going to remove water. So let us say that one OH is removed from one carbon and one H is going to uh, will be removed from the other. Let us make this like that so that it is simple to understand. So as you know that whenever the elimination is carried out, the elimination is carried out from the alpha, beta and gamma eliminations. Uh, we have different types of elimination reaction. So in this one uh, atom is going to remove from one carbon atom and one, carb one uh, atom is going to remove from the another one. So here what is going to happen is that one OH is going to remove from this carbon and H from this. So that means the water molecule is going to get lost. So what is the need you must, this must be striking in your mind that why we have not uh, removed two atoms atoms from the single carbon. The reason being because we have to put the double bond right. So if, uh, in order to put a double bond so this carbon should uh, lack uh, in, a, in any bond and this carbon should lack in the bond. Then only they will be able to make double bond between themselves. So that is why what we have done is that we, uh, this it has lost H it has lost OH. So that means we need to satisfy its valency also and its valency also. So as a result what happens there falls a double bond between them. So as you can see H3, CH3, CH, CH, double bond, double bond, again CH2, CH2. So this is what we have is ethene. So that means simply take an alcohol, add the dehydrating agent, remove OH from one carbon and remove H from the other carbon and after, as a result what you will get, you will get a alkene. So this is how you are going to form from the, as a result from dehydration of alcohol. Second is dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halide. So obviously we are going to take an alkyl halide. So let us take one alkyl halide. So again I am going to write in this form because whenever you write in this form it is easy to understand actually. So this is my uh, propyl halide any halogen chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine right. So this is what I have. So now I am going to perform dehydrohalogenation and when I need to perform dehydrohalogenation I need to take alcoholic KOH. So for uh, forming dehydrohalogenation what is required? Alcoholic KOH is required. So it is actually going to remove an halogen from one carbon atom and hydrogen from the side adjacent carbon atom. So as you can see that when the reaction occur this H and X actually gets removed hydrohalogen hydrohalogen and as a result to replenish uh, to recover their uh, valency they will form a double bond between them. So what we will get as a result obviously we will get that CH3 CH double bond CH2. So this is our alkene. So that means when we start with propyl halide what do we get? We get propene. So that means this is something called as dehydrohalogenation. Same thing happened here. We removed OH from 1 and H from here and in this thing like this and this differ is in dif the difference between two is that in this we removed H and OH and in this we removed H and X. That is dehydrohalogenation it was the dehydration and likewise you need to keep in mind that for this you use hydrating a dehydrating agent and for this you use alcoholic KOH. So but the basic concept is same because they are losing their bonds actually and we need to satisfy the valency so we will put accordingly a double bond between those carbon atoms and when there is a double bond between carbon chain we know that it belongs to a member of uh, it is actually a member of alkene. Third is reduction of alkynes. As you all know that alkynes are those which have minimum one triple bond between them. Right. So when we are carried out, carrying out reduction of al alkynes, we need to have a controlled reduction. 
because the uh, triple bond will turns into sec uh, when you add something it will turn into a double bond compound and when you add more to it it will turn into a single bond compound right so we need to have a controlled uh, reduction actually so that the reaction stops at a particular step so this is what i have in al alkyne i'm going to reduce it so let's say i'm adding in hydrogen this is what is the reduction this reaction occur in presence of uh, this thing palladium poisoned by barium salt so uh, when pal when palladium is cat sorry poisoned by barium salt it is also called as lindlar catalyst it is also called as lindlar catalyst so again what is going to happen one h is going to attack this one h is going to attach attack this so what is the result you will get this triple bond will turn into double bond but you need to control this reaction as i told you that uh, it this uh, catalyst may uh, reduce alkenes also and they will get reduced to the alkanes we don't we don't want actually we are actually in search of alkenes we are preparing alkenes so we need to have a controlled reduction for this and this palladium catalyzed by barium salt is something called as lindlar catalyst and in absence of that you can also one catalyst is striking in my mind you can also have a bridge reduction that is sodium in liquid ammonia when you are carrying out reaction in sodium in liquid ammonia this reaction is called as birch kind of reduction Pal uh, palladium with uh, palladium poisoned by barium salt is lindlar catalyst sodium in liquid ammonia is called as birch reduction the product is again going to be the same that is we need to control the reaction and after reduction the triple bond will get converted into the double bond compound that is what we have our alkenes next is coles electrolytic reduction so how you are going to uh, get the alkenes as a result of coles electrolytic reduction so obviously as the name suggests we need to carry out the electrolysis so what we did here we have this kind of compound right sodium acetate because but here the two members means a vicinal type of salt is required what you do is you pass electric current what happens it gets dissociated and what do you get actually you get CH2 double bond CH2 that is the ethene along with that you get carbon dioxide because you are doing electrolysis when it is in molten state that means the water is also present so you get sodium hydroxide and along with that you get an hydrogen so that means when you are reacting it with this type of molecule you are doing an electrolysis and it, it is occurring in a molten or aqueous state so this is going to get reduced into uh, reduce not not reduce won't be the correct word it is going to form an alkene respective alkene and along with that we are going to get carbon dioxide molecule we are going to get NaOH and along with that we will get H2 so this is what is the Coles electrolytic reduction re, uh, sorry reaction for forming a alkene last is cracking as I told you when we were discussing alkene also that when you take a bigger alkene let us take a bigger alkene let us say it is propane and you are going to heat it at high temperature it is going to break giving a mixture of alkene and alkene so what do you get as a result we get alkene and we also get alkene so this can be a method to prepare the alkene actually one more method I missed in summing up let us do that from dihalogen derivative from dihalogen derivative what is that dihalogen derivative suppose you have alkane but you have two halogens that means in, in this case uh, in this dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halide you had x on one and h on one but in in, the, in this case what do you have you have two halogens attached to an adjacent uh, this thing adjacent carbons so you are going to react it with zinc dust so what is going to happen when you are going to react with zinc dust so obviously this, this is going to react with that and as a result we will get alkene and along with that we will get ZnPr2 so this is what is alkene so I think it is clear that uh, the basically what actually the alkenes are why they are called as olefins why they are named as uh, ileen and how to write an iopic what type of isomerism they show and how we can actually prepare them so you need to remember that that we can prepare by removing water from alcohol we can pre prepare by removing hydrogen and halogen from alkyl halide in presence of alcoholic KOH you need to remember that also third by reduction alkynes but the reduction should be controlled because we need to stop the reduction at, at the alkene level next Coles electrolytic re, uh, reaction in this the difference is that you need to take this kind of type of compound minimum two carbon compound 
cracking of alkane in this uh, what you need to remember is that you need to take a bigger alkane and after that you will get a mixture of alkane and alkene so depending upon the boiling points and many tests many more tests you can actually separate it dihalogen derivative you can take as much long as chain uh, means the chain uh, may be so much the chain can be uh, means there is no limit to the carbon atom in the chain the condition is that that to the adjacent carbon there must be a halogen and you are going to react it with zinc dust and uh, they both will remove the halogens and to satisfy their valency we will put a double bond and we know that whenever uh, the carbon chain possess minimum one double bond or more than one double bond it is uh, it no longer remains an alkane it or any other thing it becomes an alkene that is the member of alkene.